Jason. Welcome, Jason. Hello. Hello. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a hacker and I build one of everything and a number of things I've built with SDL. It's fun. Um, so if you want to see the code samples for this, it's uh, on GitHub. I'm Zangus everywhere on the internet. Um, there's tons of stuff. So you could uh, grab that and play with it. It's all MIT licensed, so if you, uh, if you want to hack, feel free. So what is SDL? It is a cross-platform framework for mainly games, but uh, 2D and 3D graphics, uh, text drawing, audio, mouse and keyboard input, networking, and all of these little bits you'd use to build a full app, especially a, uh, a standalone game for the desktop. So it's a, it's a C-based library, and it runs um, multiple platforms. It was originally written to run mainly on Windows as an answer to the DirectX library, which was in the process of phasing out 2D graphics because it was going completely 3D. So they had Direct 2D um, that was being kind of swept under the rug and deprecated. Um, so a fellow named Sam Lantinga built this project to build two-dimensional games and have all the support for that that you would get from uh, a library like DirectX on Windows, but it was built to be multi-platform and run also on Linux and uh, OS X. Over time it's evolved into running on more systems. It'll run on Android and iOS now. And a lot of the newer phone platforms, uh, things like Tizen um, and, and a lot of the more uh, beta operating systems are also able to support SDL. So you can write uh, one application and with very little change be able to run it on a bunch of different operating systems. And it's, it's best for games, but it's also really useful for music apps because it has a powerful mixing library uh, that does multi-channel audio and handles um, a lot of format loading and playback. Things like MIDI and, and uh, MP3 files can be played with it. Um, it also has a good networking library and uh, since it's based on 2D uh, rectangular or transparent graphics, any sort of sprite-based UI, like if the built-in UI tools, if you're using something ugly like Win32, it's pretty crippled, uh, you can't really do a fancy custom UI that's drawn by an artist very easily. Um, whereas this makes it kind of a requirement. You can't, um, you don't have the library of tools that you normally have, like your buttons and your select lists and your menus and that sort of thing that come with uh, native OS libraries like GTK. And things that it's not good for, database applications, like a CRUD app, worst idea ever, because it has no database tools, you have to use third-party stuff, it doesn't have all the um, you know, grid widgets and things like that that you want uh, to have that you write three lines of code and your app's done. Um, it's also not good for web development because it's a desktop framework. Uh, it's not good at native look and feel because uh, it doesn't use any of the built-in controls on any of the operating systems. You have to design your user interface from scratch. So that's why projects without a graphic designer are probably not a good fit for SDL. And you can get it at libsdl.org. The most common version is 1.2. That's been around for at least 10 years. It hasn't really changed. It's been stable and um, tons and tons of things have been written with it. Um, things like uh, Unreal Tournament used it, um, Angry Birds, the Humble Bundle for uh, indie games. And you'll find a gigantic list if you search somewhere like Wikipedia of all the games that have been written with 1.2. Uh, 2.0 came out last year and it's somewhat backward and compatible, but porting is pretty trivial in that you change a couple of ways, uh, a couple of things about the way you create your, um, your windows and instantiate your graphics, but it would typically take a couple hours tops to port an old app to the uh, new version. And so let me show you an example of some of the things, you, one of the things you can build with it. I uh, spent an evening hacking and I built this um, silly little not quite a game and not quite not. Um, so it is a game where you have to fight a monster, this big tough monster that uh, you can find at the Oregon Zoo, uh, Lion Cub. Um, <laughs> And it's got, it's got a background, and it's got uh, an, an overlay of a transparent graphic and some, some different health meters and things like that. So you can actually try to attack this monster by clicking here. It's got mouse handling. Um, and it, you know, it makes sound when you try to attack, and it's, you see it's, um, it's biting you every time you try to attack it because there's just no match for it. Um, so you can use magic to, to increase your health. 
and uh, suddenly you're in a little bit better shape, but you know that this thing is going to win, so you better run away. And it <laughs> turns out it's faster than you. you. You're somewhere else, but it followed you. So, um, <laughs> But these are kind of some of the, the basic things you can do with, uh, with SDL. And you could probably imagine if somebody uh, were more talented than just uh, programmer art and had a real idea, you could easily build up some sort of a game with just these building blocks. So let me show you the, what the code looks like to do this sort of thing. This is um, an, a, just sort of an, a bunch of ugly code that I hacked together in an evening and it is, um, it's not designed in any sort of object-oriented manner. It is sort of um, C written using C++ in that it's C but I like C out because it's easier for formatting stuff and debugging messages. What's that? Sure. Is that good? <laughs> All right. So the way that SDL works is there are a number of things that you include. You always need SDL.h. And then the optional components, there's uh, an image library um, for loading things like BMPs and PNGs and JPEGs. Uh, there's a mixer library that you can use for loading uh, WAV files and playing multi-channel audio. Uh, there's separate libraries for handling keyboard and mouse input. And there's also a true type font library that lets you um, render high quality text. And depending on which p bits you're using, you just include those. Um, so I'll skip down to my main window. It's very simple. There's, there's so many um, things that you do as surfaces or as textures. So each image you load from a file, it's going to end up being a surface or a texture or both. So you end up declaring a ton of variables. Can you make the font even bigger? Sure. How's that? Marble. Oh, golly. <laughs> we don't need new glasses. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is your standard main, and you see there are a lot of SDL underscore surface, SDL underscore texture, window. These are the, the things that will hold your image data. There's normally a window, which is your main frame that holds everything. Um, surfaces are image data um, in the... 1.2 version of SDL, normally you would just take a, your window was a surface, everything else was a surface, and you just splat surfaces on top of each other, piling them up. Um, version 2 added textures, and they're a little bit more capable. I'm not using any of the, the advanced bits of them, but you can, you can do things like tile them easily. Um, I'm just using them as if they were surfaces. Um, another important thing you'll find yourself using a lot is the SDL rectangle, because Everything has uh, you know, x, y, width, and height. So that's where you're drawing your, your um, lion cub, or your text, or your, your life meter. So there are a bunch of variables that just declare rectangles. Um, fonts and colors are another basic building block. You can just load a font from a file. You can load, uh, declare your colors as just RGB values. So initialization in SDL is a whole lot of initting each of the individual libraries. Um, you see here there's SDL in it, and I just threw everything at it because I didn't want to get picky about what parts I wanted to use. Um, image, I'm only using PNGs here, so I in, only init the image. And each one of those returns a uh, standard C form. It returns a value. You can check to see if you failed and call get error. If, if you really enjoy the, the old-timey get error uh, calls, this is a good for you. Um, the, in it the image library, in it the TTF library, and the error messages are actually pretty good. They'll tell you if you completely fail to have TTF support because you don't have um, TTF font library installed on your operating system, or PN you can't load PNGs because you don't have libpng. Um, the error messages are pretty good. Uh, they've had plenty of time to figure out how to write a decent error message, and they've, they've done that. Um, and for playing audio, it's, it's pretty simple. You tell it the, the sample rate and the size of your buffers and um, the format, but you don't have to care a whole lot. You just um, It'll do whatever you tell it. And um, here we're telling it four channels, so we can have four sounds playing at the same time. Um, and all of this boilerplate is pretty much the same in every single app you'll write. So um, getting it wrong is fatal, and getting it right is easy. So. so that's what we've done there with the initialize SDL. And if something failed, it returns false, and we give up and jump out. Um, but the where we start to see things is we have a create window call. It's a fixed 1280 by 800 size, but you could, uh, you could get fancy and let people configure their window size or auto detect and things like that. But we're just creating a window. 
Um, new in version 2 versus version 1.2 is having a renderer. Uh, in this case, we're creating an accelerated renderer, so it will render these 2D graphics really fast on a computer that is way faster than you even need it to be in the first place. Um, because 2D graphics are not really intensive, uh, especially if you're not doing high frame rate things. Um, and then we start loading our images. There's all of this boilerplate, because you, you load your image, and then you create a texture from it. Because um, it gives you a surface, and then you create a texture from your surface. And you do this over and over and over again. And there is so much code. We'll just kind of scroll through it a little quickly, because there are, it's repetitive. Just like the, um, the font, open font. These calls are very simp simple and very basic. But if you were to write your own true type font loader, it would be a lot of lines of code. So you're better off just taking what they give you for free. Now, here I uh, create a bunch of pre-generated uh, pre text. And it's just a bunch, of, a bunch of phrases that we can throw on the screen. And a bunch of positions that are pre-set um, pre up. And then there's the game logic, or the, the active logic. And the important thing is SDL poll event. There are a bunch of different event types you can get. Um, there's a, a quit event if you want to exit the app. Um, but the things you usually care about are the key down and mouse button down events so you can handle uh, user interaction. There's also support for uh, joysticks and um, other input devices. Um, and they behave almost the same as the, the mouse input. But here we're doing a very basic check of, is this click in the rectangle that, have, that matches the position of the attack text? And if so, we play the attack sound by mix play channel. And then we subtract from your life and change the notification text to this text that says you attacked and you're in trouble. Um, and we do the, that, repeat that again for the make magic and the uh, run away. So the important part is the render loop. That's after we process an event, we render the screen again. So we clear the screen, we copy the background in first, and then we drop these bits on there, the, the life meter and the magic meter and the, the, uh, the various things. The, um, the life meter we, we actually take, and the amount of life you have, if it's, if it's a smaller percent, we just shrink it. We're, we're just stretching the image. We're not doing any fancy calculation. So there is not a whole lot to this app, and you can, you can write something like this in a couple hours tops and actually have a usable thing you could start hacking on and building your own games. And it doesn't matter what you're using. If it's, this, this is Linux, but it'll work just as well in Windows or Mac OS. A um, little bit harder to get it set up on um, something like Android because they need the uh, native development kit and you have to interface the Java to the C code. But that's also not hard. There are plenty of templates and examples online. Um, but this is fun to hack. And um, another thing I've built with it, I've uh, I built a drum machine. I built a theremin for a touchpad so you can tap and drag your finger around to create sounds. Um, I created a Telnet client because on WebOS, back when it was a real thing, um, there, were, there was no Telnet client. So I used SDL and its TTF text rendering to actually create a, a full Telnet client uh, using the network libraries. And it was really, really crap. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the best Telnet client you could get for WebOS. And I gradually improved it over, over the course of months until I deleted the operating system, effectively. But it was fun because I, I wrote it because I, I like, like to play MUDs now and then. And I just wanted to mud on my touchpad when I was um, hanging out doing nothing. And it's, uh, it only took three evenings to get it to the point where it was usable. And that's the great thing about SDL is you don't have to worry so much about um, the low level stuff. It just gets you to the point where you can load your assets and put them on the screen or react to input. And uh, I, I would encourage anybody who's, who's curious to just grab it and start hacking because it's, it's a good tool. And uh, that's, that's what I had to show for today. Any, any questions from anybody on anything? Okay. He was there first. No, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was just going to ask you as far as um, different platforms. So you've got some interface with maybe a, what, a GL render? Yes, you can actually do 3D graphics with SDL. It's got bindings to OpenGL. 
Uh, I didn't show any of that uh, bit today, and that sometimes it's a little more complicated to set up, but they've, with the latest version, they've made creating a 3D context way easier. So if you don't want to mess with the GLUT uh, and things like that, it might be easier to grab SDL and start doing 3D through that avenue. Does it handle all the, the differences? So you basically just write your thing with SDL, and it will interact with the underlying graphics subsystem? Yeah, yeah, because it's it handles everything up to the point of creating a window you can draw on. So once you're to that point, you can just use all the primitives and draw bitmaps and things like that on the window, and not have to worry about um, things like video card drivers or any of that craziness. So um, it seems kind of a terrible language to write this kind of stuff in. Yes, it is. Have you played much with the bindings for SDL from other languages? Um, no, I haven't. I've, um, the, the other stuff I've written has been C++ and just happens to be calling the, the C of SDL and it's, um, you know, rather than having a billion variables declared, I'll have, um, you know, a class or a struct that keeps it organized and it's way easier to deal with because you do not, my main is what, like 400 lines of code? Don't do that. That's icky and dumb. I know that SDL has kind of a reputation for being cross-platform compiling on like a, uh, I don't know, like a 68K and OS X and iOS device at the same time. Yeah. Like what subset of SDL you're limited to if you want that much portability? You're not really limited because they, the, at the core, the, the bits that I've used here, those are all, those all work on pretty much everything. Um, there are a bunch of add-ons that, that are not written by the, the author himself that are hit or miss. I mean, there are things, the plugins for um, different audio codecs and video playback and things like that. Like the video playback, there, are, um, this has a bunch of plugins for, and those are those are probably the place where you run into the most glitches. But the core stuff works pretty much everywhere. All right, I'll. Uh, uh, is there any way to survive, or is the line here? The the only way to survive is to do nothing. Because um, any, th any action you take will just make the lion hurt you because the lion is tougher than you. And you shouldn't be attacking a lion anyway, you big jerk. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, thanks, Thank th thanks for having me out. And uh, feel free to hack on any of this stuff. And, uh, <laughs>